How do you define a city? When you think of a city as not your home, what's on the postcard? Sure, there's always the characteristic attractions, but in every city, there's the skyline. When you picture a city, say Paris, Dubai, or uh, Philly, you picture the towering forest, not the trees. Skyscrapers collectively give us a face, a personality, and a symbol of an entire city. And for something that is so common around the world, there was at one time only one skyline. This is a very special heart of the city because today we are in Chicago. So just quickly wanted to get this out of the way. I've been notified by the Chicago Film Office. In Illinois, it's state law that if you're filming in Chicago city limits, you're legally required to show the Chicago theater, an L train, the Bean, and a deep dish pizza. And for good measure, I'm gonna throw in Obama and Lincoln. So as a travel host, you're supposed to act like you're an expert and intimate with every city. But Chicago is new to me and I dig it. It's kind of like if NYC got wiped down with a wet one and they moved every building back 20 feet. I also tasted Malort for the first time last night, and I am still tasting it today. So, Chicago is known for its architecture. Frank Lloyd Wright is from here. I know that's the only architect you can name. One of the most popular tourist attractions in town is the architecture boat tour. And like, you know it has to be good because people don't give a about architecture. But we're gonna show you something that that architecture tour is not going to show you, and something that is a lot more influential than what that tour will show you. We're going to show you the world's first skyscrapers. These early skyscrapers are so culturally relevant, they've been submitted to become UNESCO World Heritage Sites. That is crazy. Not a lot of things that are this modern can become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That would put it on the same list as like the Colosseum or the Pyramids of Giza. So there's a handful of factors on why Chicago became the first city to build skyscrapers. And one of the main ones, uh, uh, oh, Okay, that was, that was close. Oh, oh, wait, the, uh, oh, oh. So whenever you see a pretty drone shot on this, those are filmed by Heart of the City producer and drone enthusiast, Russell Ford. And that building he just 9-11'd into is a federal building where I swear to God, cops and Homeland Security were parked outside of. Also, this happened in the middle of a weekday, like some poor person in their window office just stained their chair brown. <sighs> okay, moving on. So to understand why this happened in Chicago, I'm going to condense the last thousand years of history leading up to the first skyscraper. Okay, tall buildings, man's internal dick measuring contest. Throughout history, the tallest buildings have been built by those with the most power. So for like a thousand years, the church was the tallest building in every town. Next beat, the industrial revolution. Steam engine invented, and you can now produce high quality steel for cheap. Industry becomes more powerful than the church. Next beat, Chicago is founded in 1837. In the 1840s, Chicago connects a canal to the Mississippi, therefore access to the Great Lakes, the Gulf of Mexico, in the Atlantic. Soon, train lines are connected. Chicago becomes the transportation hub for the entire United States. Population booms by 1870, the second biggest city in the country. There's a lot of money changing hands. Okay, so there's still other rich cities in this period, so why Chicago? So in 1871, a cow kicks over a lantern. This fire is sort of brought about new ingenuity and new ways of thinking and new ways of getting these buildings back up. So this is Ward. When we were filming skyscrapers downtown, out of nowhere, a stranger approached us and warned us we were about to step into a dead pigeon. Turns out Ward isn't an unhoused maniac, but is executive director of Preservation Chicago. He also very kindly gave us a tour of a historic department store nearby. One of the great architects of the age was William LeBaron Jenny, and he employed the idea of metal frame construction, which we now call skyscraper construction. So in the mid 19th century, buildings are not like taller than two or three stories for a reason. One, elevators aren't really safe yet, and nobody wants to live up high and like cardio up 800 stairs after going out and getting some 1850s hardies. Two, the older way most buildings were constructed, all the floors inside with all the people and furniture, they have to be supported or imagine like hung on the building's outer wall slash masonry. 
which is a ton of weight and pressure on those walls. And I'm told if you're building that like sucks. But in 1884, Chicago's home insurance building uses the new innovation of a steel frame. To sort of understand it, it's kind of like thinking of a metal bird cage where you're hanging this material, this brick and terracotta and stone on a framework, which is that metal bird cage. So the home insurance building, it only had a steel frame on the perimeter, but soon architects, they start putting it throughout the entire building. So it's like this giant metal skeleton that distributes and spreads out the entire weight. So it's not all on the outer walls anymore. And now buildings start growing vertically quickly. Also, it's not until this point in history that buildings can have big windows. Like, buildings had tiny ass windows before this. And this is like the first time in history where department stores start having window displays, which become a craze. And to me, the craziest thing about these buildings is how modern a lot look. These are all over 120 years old and still being vitally used. And out of all these buildings, this is my favorite, the Monadnock built in 1893. Like this looks this modern, yet it was built in a time period where most people thought you could take pictures of ghosts. This building turned 130 years old and it looks so modern. Like if it was in the next Star Wars film, it could play like the projects for the Imperial Army. And there's a reason why these buildings look so modern. If you lived in a city 150 years ago, it probably would have looked like this. The Gilded Age is known as being a time of excess, and that excess really comes out in the architecture. You know, like rich people usually are, they like showing off that they are rich. Extremely ornate, you have a lot of flourishes. Uh, if I haven't mentioned this, we're filming this guerrilla style, so we have to um, pull to the side. So during this period, Chicago is the forefront of architecture. There's kind of this new idea or movement bubbling up among all the architects. Architects. So all these fancy flourishes and like being extraordinary maybe isn't the best comfortability for actually living in a place. And that's how you get the Chicago School. The Chicago School is not actually a school or a place or an NBC show. It's what you call the group of buildings that came out of this period. And the thesis of the movement is very simple, but very revolutionary at the time. A building should be designed for its actual purpose for like the people using it and not for the aesthetic of the building. So like big tickets goth target here, it would function better for the people as just a regular target. Form follows function was the maxim of this age, a very early form of ergonomics, which now affects everything that you use. Literally, when a product is designed or an app or any type of technology is like, how is this easiest for the user? Before, when I said the architecture boat tour was one of the most popular attractions in town, I didn't mention there's a close second. With the rise of telecommunications and internet, people are wondering the usefulness of a skyscraper. What were once the towering beacons of commerce and trade had been kneecapped by the capitalist system they created. These superstructures, once designed for their form and function, will be thought of as ornate flourishes of a time gone. But what interconnectivity can never replace is awe, wonder, spectacle, whether in the form of a skyscraper or something we can't yet imagine. As long as there are humans, there will always be a cocky new symbol of man's towering triumph and ingenuity.